20 times. Ten times more. Two times more. Let it go and stop. Wow. You run the marathon, you win. You think they're like, oh, great job, Lewis. Like, here's your medal. And you think they're like leading you over to the podium to like, you know, stand in front of everyone. And they're actually just leading you over to like the second marathon that starts <laughs> right now. Right now, yeah. start running. Yes, just back to back marathons. Like making it, you put everything you had into it. You put your whole life on pause, you know, you, you gave everything, you have nothing left. And if you do have something left, then you cheated. You know, like you didn't, you didn't put everything into it. And then they're like, now you have to go on the road, now you have to write articles, yes. now you have to go talk to people, now you have to make all these decisions about the cover or the title or release date, you know, all the stuff that goes into creative work. And then, and then probably like the third marathon is just like, and now you wait. Like now, because right. it never happens as soon as you want. Like. times. Ten times more. Two times more. Let it go and stop. I started my first oh, blog so in 2006. I sold my first book in 2011. Wow. My first new, my, my, the, and then my first like book about philosophy, The Obstacles Away, came out in 2014, and it didn't hit a bestseller list until 2019. Crazy. So it's on top of all that, then it, you just have to. Ma master your craft or acquire a skill and become really great at it then learn how to promote and market it and get it out there in the world. Yeah. Then wait another five to 10 years for it to actually get the results you want it to get. Yeah, it's like it's like investing. Like first you have to make capital, like earn yeah. wages, you have capital. Then you have to find the opportunity, the thing you invest in, 
then you have to wait. To then wait five, ten years till you yeah, make some money. Yeah, compounding returns, yes. interest, like you just have to let time do its work. And I don't know if you're like me, you know, ten years ago I invested in a lot of things that never made money, that yes. I lost all the money. So yeah. you have to make a lot of mistakes yes. through the lessons of promoting marketing or putting yourself out in the second marathon. Yeah. In the third marathon of just waiting around for time yeah. to pass. For and then what if up. what if your thing is like really ahead of its time? Right? Then you have to no wait one, even longer. Then no one cares. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you have to wait longer. Yeah. You might even be I kinda feel like mask and masculinity for me was a little ahead of its time. It came out like right when Me Too was happening. Mm -hmm. and they're like, oh, we don't want to listen to a guy talking about vulnerability. Sure. We just want to yell at men. times. there's this expression that nothing is more powerful than an idea whose time has come. Mm. And so the difference I found, yeah, like you work really hard, you make something, it's objectively good, but then timing is not perfectly right. It, it doesn't fail. It's like a single. But then right. when you have something and it's exactly time to the moment, then it's a home run. Or your thing is just kind of floating there waiting for the moment. So like I saw this during the, I've been writing about stoicism and so resiliency and obstacles and also stillness. These things, they, they worked, but then, you know, March 2020, they take on a different relevance yeah. to people. And suddenly, Six years ago, they weren't as powerful. Yeah, and now also suddenly people have time. Right. And so... To do a daily meditation. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah. So then it's like, then, yeah, you can either get a second life or a third life. And, mm -hmm. and so I think the, the important part is, like, you do the work, you put yourself out there, you have to trust that it's going to work. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't, but... Yeah, it's it's a it's a grind. I have a, a thesis that um, if you want to overcome your fears, you have to go all in on it. I, I don't think okay. you can. I don't think you can outthink your fear. You have to go all in on your fear in order for the fear to start to disappear. Okay. And you've got to have a lot of courage in order to face the thing that you're insecure about, that you're afraid of, people judging you, that you're afraid of failing or falling down on your face. Sure. Um, but once you overcome it, or at least you're able to face it in a comfortable stance, maybe you're never fully comfortable, but at least you're like, I can do the thing. That's when I feel like your greatest gift can come to the world, or that's where I feel like there's so much reward on the other side. But it's extremely scary to face our fears. Why do you think it's so hard for people to face their insecurities, their shame, their fears, their doubts? Well, if it wasn't scary, then like courage wouldn't need to be there. times.
sent out more. <gasps> Times more. <sighs> Letting go and stop. It's good that you're afraid, right? Like, if it, I guess one way to think about it is like, if there wasn't a risk, let, let's say it's starting a business. If like all you had to do was like have an idea for business, and then it was guaranteed that you'd be successful, right. then every there'd be a lot more businesses, right? Like everyone would do it. It's so the fact that it's scary is partly what makes it valuable, right. because most people are not going to get over the fear. So like when you think about things that are scary or challenging, it's like you could think about it like a heavy weight. If the weight is easy to lift, you're not going to build any muscle. So like that you have that mm. sensation of fear or hesitation or doubt, one one way to think about it is that it's a positive sign. Like Stephen Pressfield talks about that the resistance you feel is uh, commensurate with like the value. So like mm. You're, you're not afraid to do things that don't matter. You're only afraid to do like big things that matter. So the harder or the scarier it is, the more valuable that thing is for you sometimes? I think, I would say a lot of the times, not all the time, maybe it's scary because you're about to you know, implode or right. drive off a cliff for no reason. Like it's not that fear has no place, but it could be a sign that you're on the cusp of something. And so when, when I think about it, I think I, I go like, okay, if I'm not pushing myself, if I'm not scary, that's probably a sign that I'm just doing something that I'm already really comfortable with and therefore not growing. So I, I think it's good, it's a good sign. But the, I think the reason it's scary, you said you can't like outthink it. I don't know, I, I disagree a little bit. What I would say is that oftentimes the reason we're scared about it is because we haven't really thought about it. So we have these kind of like vague fears, you know, like, like, well, I don't want to do it because, and then you're like, because why? Like, tell me right, what right. you're really thinking about. The worst thing will happen because I got made fun of because I get, it's I'll actually, lose my money. It's or, actually yeah. not that big a deal. Like I talk in the book, there's this story about Pericles. He's this great Athenian general and um, this he's leading these troops in a, in a naval convoy and there's this, that suddenly like there's an eclipse. And like, imagine, Living, solar eclipse. Yeah, thousands right. of years ago, you don't know what an eclipse is. Just all of a sudden, in the middle dark. of the day, it's yeah. dark, right? And so everyone's scared, and they thought, is this like an omen? Is this the gods? Are they angry? Um, and there's a similar story where like thunder happens, and they're like, what is that noise? What's going on? And he just goes like, so so it's plunged into darkness, and he grabs his cloak and he puts it over this guy's head, and he goes like, are you scared of this? And the guy goes, no, and he's like, but it's just darkness. He's like, what does it matter if the darkness is because the sun disappears or because like I put, you know, my cloak over your head? 